Hello and welcome to Inside EVs. You join me here in San Angelo, Texas, where we are at the Goodyear Proving Grounds. Behind me is a Tesla Model S 90D. Behind that is a Tesla Supercharger. And to the right of me is a giant racetrack. So we are gonna be doing some tire testing today. And uh, join us, because we're gonna talk all about tires for electric vehicles. This is a 2018 Tesla Model S 90D and equipped on the vehicle are tires without a so-called sound comfort technology. Here is a tire to demonstrate what this is. This is Goodyear's uh, basically uh, foam filled inside of the tire to reduce uh, noise and I'm sure boominess and other things we're going to learn about throughout this video. Now I wanted to do this series where we learn more about tires for electric vehicles specifically because there's so many things that go into it. So in this video we're going to be just talking about the noise. Without a combustion engine creating sort of a white nose noise approach driving down the highway, uh, a lot more road transfer uh, noise comes into the cabin. So Goodyear invited us out to this really quite secretive facility in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and said, hey, we'll show you around and uh, show you how we make our tires and make our tires quieter and uh, how they make the uh, original equipment tire for Tesla. So let's get into it. Joining us and helping us to evaluate some tires is Josh Pu'u from Goodyear. Josh, why don't you explain a little bit about what we're gonna find today? As Kyle mentioned, today we're gonna be talking about uh, tires and how we test them specifically for EVs. What we have before us here is our Goodyear Eagle Touring with Sound Comfort Technology. Uh, this is a tire that we helped develop to help alleviate some of the challenges that uh, electric vehicles uh, produce. B because there's no internal combustion engine, noise, vibration, and harshness becomes very important. Now, Goodyear has strived to, to minimize road noise that's transmitted back to the cabin of a vehicle through tread design changes, construction changes, but given the inherent sensitivity of cavity shapes, that's not always entirely possible. So we develop what we call sound cover technology, which is a uh, open cell polyurethane foam that's applied to the inner liner of the tire after it's been cured. And that helps alleviate some of that air cavity resonance that can permeate back through the cabin. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take Kyle out on the test track. We're gonna demonstrate what a tire without foam is like and then we'll come in, rotate to a set that does have it, and see how that cavity resonance has dropped and talk about subjectively how much of an improvement that is for the occupants. We're in the Model S now. Timon and Drew, who you guys know from our videos, are with us. We're gonna do a little NVH testing, which will be kind of interesting. Um, explain this facility that we're heading to because our, our audience hasn't seen this track yet. Sure thing. So this whole area, a good year, we call this our vehicle dynamics area or VDA. Uh, so our primary role for testing within Goodyear is all passenger and light truck tires. So anything from uh, your typical grand touring all season tire, you throw in a Corolla, all the way up to our streetable track tire, our Supercar 3R, which you put on a Camaro. It was all tested here and truck tires included. So we have a two and a half mile road course. Uh, within that, we have a NVH ride roads uh, section which we'll be demonstrating here in a second where we can look at both t uh, tire noise uh, tire comfort uh, which we'll get to later and we have various different engineered and roughly real world replicated roads to kind of give us a good idea how the tire is going to perform when it's in the market yeah nice and so we have the car topped up to pretty much a hundred percent uh battery seems healthy eighteen thousand miles on this model s and did you guys get this pretty early on uh, we did. So there were some supplemental uh, projects uh, other groups on the Proving Grounds were using this for. Uh, every once in a while we'd borrow it to do some of our own handling uh, testing within our group. 
Um, but, but basically that's 18,000 miles of track use. Correct. <laughs> so some of it also could be durability. Uh, so maybe not quite at the limit all the time, but sure. um, yeah, it's been in the fleet for a while and still working on it. Yeah, that's awesome. So nice to hear that the car is holding up well for you. That's always good for our audience to hear is years of abuse basically. Yep and uh, seems to be doing pretty well. So there is uh, tons of different types of surfaces. Obviously, like you mentioned, there's the full track that uh, we can go around. There's also engineered surfaces, like you mentioned with uh, pothole negative type surfaces is what you call them, yes. and positive surfaces that will have the tire drop down into an obstacle and then raise up onto a, a expansion joint or a little bump, something like this. And when you're driving the vehicle, do you have a, a particular speed or uh, all of our testing here of course is subjective right now Correct. but there's also objective instrumented testing that you can do yes and and how would you use both throughout your tire testing program so normally for a tire development program we start off with tests that are the least wear intensive on the tire and work our way up to the most wear intensive so noise and ride comfort comes first uh, some programs we, we will do instrumented testing so what we'll do as we have equipment from head acoustics, uh, your uh, squadrigos, your squabolds. Uh, we will instrument the car with either standalone microphones at various positions to replicate your uh, ear positions. Either so you'll put mics up here where the driver's ears would be essentially. Correct. So we have, we can do up to six different microphones in addition to the headset, the binaural headset that comes with the unit. So we can record up eight different channels uh, at a time. So depending on the program, if there's a particular area of the car that generates a certain resonance that we need to kind of hone in on, we can focus our uh, cameras there, or sorry, microphones there, and get the data we need. That's um, super neat. At least objectively. Yeah. And then ultimately, after that, we move on to our subjective test, which is a little more detailed. Uh, we drive over more surfaces, different speeds, so we do anything from 25 miles an hour all the way up to highway speeds. And within each road surface, there are numerous different things we're looking at, which we'll I'll break down when we're up there. Yeah, that's super neat. So um, it's interesting that the subjective testing is more intensive than the objective data gathering. Um, do you have to like get your ears clean? Like, how do you know <laughs> what you're feeling is uh, you know accurate and consistent? Obviously, you have multiple people on your team, and you all kind of have to come to agreement. It sounds like. Uh, but what what exactly are you going to be listening for in tire NVH? Is it going to be sort of a, a low frequency rumble or high pitch noise or, or what are we looking for? So for us, uh, for any of all the subjective testing, when we first start off here, there is a pretty big training process we go through. For me, when I started this job, I had no prior experience. So I was literally coming in as a greenhorn and needed to learn everything from scratch. Uh, for noise and ride, that took about a year. Oh, really? Kind of really get to a point where I'd be comfortable testing anything on my own. Um, for subjective noise evaluations, we first start off looking at tread noise attributes. So uh, that can be ranging from your booming inputs from the 20 to 100 hertz range. After that, from the 100 to 400 hertz, that's what we call your structure bore noise. Um, there's a pretty fine one down there from about 100 to 300 hertz, somewhere thereabouts, which is cavity noise. And that's what we're gonna kind of showcase is like the big thing that the sound comfort tech really helps reduce. Right, because that's noise that's generated within the tire, the space between the tire and the yes, rim. Correct, and that's that's purely generated from the air resonating or vibrating within that cavity and then being permeated back through the cavity. Um, after that, you have your, your airborne noise, which is from about 400 all the way up to 4,000 kilo, uh, kilohertz. Um, and then your tread pattern noise is from about 400 to 1.2K. Um, so we kind of break down each segment at different speeds and kind of try to hone in on are there tonal peaks, are there tonal changes, um, is there cavity resonance here but not at this speed. So it's purely whatever the car and the tires are given to us, we try to take it in, make mental notes of it, and then we put on our reports and then use that to evaluate the success of sets as we go down the test. Man, that's crazy. I, I think it's amazing that you're able to, to really hone in on those individual frequency ranges. Um, like you said, it took a year to really become super comfortable with it. Yeah. And you've been doing this for many years now. Um, so, so when you have a new person like for us, uh, how is it that we should try to listen? Uh, obviously, you're going to point out certain things, um, but are there any tips and tricks that you have for us to figure out how to hear the differences? Because the car we're in right now doesn't have the acoustic foam. 
Correct. Right. So this is without the foam in the tire, but same tire. Yes. Exact same tire, just without the foam. Right. So kind of key things to look for. Obviously the booming noise, that's going to stand out really easily when we do our chip seal surface. It's going to be that pressure you feel kind of in the depths of your eardrums mm -hmm. um, in terms of amplitude and how much pressure kind of you use that to correlate to your overall coarseness that the tire is producing. Um, for your cavity noise, kind of the best way to describe it is if you have like a, one of those old glass Coke bottles, you try to blow on it, kind of that whistling sound oh, sure. that it kind of is produced. That's roughly what cavity noise is really going to sound like when it's so. Done. That's where we're really going to notice the difference. Correct. So it should. It's like it's going to be a constant hum or not hum, but that that ringing sound in the background mm -hmm. uh, without the foam. And then anything above that, your tread noise, uh, we call that tread shawl, where it's going to sound like a not quite a sizzle, but a shh, almost kind of like the sound the HVAC vents are making. Sure. Which Do you is, normally run HVAC off? Uh, so I was just going to say, normally yeah. that's why we turn everything off. Oh, cool. Eliminate that so part. we're cooling down the car now. Yep. <laughs> well, yep. cool. Looking forward to uh, seeing all of this. So uh, right. let's head out there. Let's head out. So as, as with any start of any tire program, if the tire is brand new, you just shred it. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll do kind of a quick warm up lap. Now, on cold mornings, you had mentioned you have a surface that's a little bit of a, a rolling road type surface, and um, you definitely warm up the tires by putting uh, impacts on them by running over bumps, basically. Yep, just want to break that construction, the carcass in, get a little bit of heat energy going. Uh, as, as we all know, the hysteresis of the rubber. You need to get that deform deformation to get a little bit of energy into it, and it's going to come into a steady state. Uh, yeah, so here it is. Yeah, so here it is. <laughs> That's awesome. And like I mentioned earlier, this also twofold gets the dampers warmed up as well. So another part that we value here is turning noise. So you hear that. Shh uh, that's what we call tread shawl. Okay. So that's kind of just uh, the air pump will do the pattern as it's rotating around. You know, just again subjectively, how loud is it? How true is it, intrusive is it to the occupants? And just another part of the evaluation. There. So, so tread shaw is that that sort of uh, chattery noise. Yep, kind of that white noise in the back. Yep. So put it in neutral. So we're just coasting down now. Yep. And what is the purpose of this test? So this is just to kind of judge how the tire noise, whether it stays consistent at all speed ranges, does it change? Because as you slow down, depending on the tire and construction, you could have tonal shifts where it could be very quiet in the high frequency range, but then as you get to the coarse structure bar noise in the lower frequency ranges, it could have these large transitions and that really come back to the cabin and get over, you know, not overpower, but become noticeable to the occupants inside. So ideally, what we're looking for is a tire that's quiet, nice and consistent, doesn't really have any noise changes throughout the speed range, and just overall remains pleasant to the ears for, for the consumer. And how would you evaluate these tires so far? So far, even without the foam, it's still what we call pretty much like a, at an OE acceptable level. Okay. Um, it's not very busy sounding. It's nice and clean. There's no weird resonances. Right. Uh, in the background, there's some tread shawl, but there's always going to be some present. Well, the car's really heavy too. Really heavy. Yeah. There are four occupants, as you as, as we said before. Uh, but all things considered, you know, with no AC, no radio, that in your everyday driving would easily mask it up. It's uh, at a perfectly acceptable level. Makes sense. Which, given that it's an OE2 tire, I would kind of expect, you would expect that. because it's just such a high quality yeah. build. And that's really one distinguishing factor between like OE tires and some broad market replacement tires is that to meet the needs of OEMs, a lot of really a lot of effort goes into making sure each facet of the tire is really good. Mm -hmm. You know, always ride comfort handling. As we get into the EVs, taking into account rolling resistance, all these factors have to be balanced. And when you get the tire with the car, that's probably going to be the best compromise for all tire performance attributes that you can have. So um, that's kind of where.
of that extra money as you go always getting spent. Sure. It's creating that really good overall package. Yeah, because because what I experienced during the last coast down, what we're experiencing now is, a, and again, my ears are terrible. I need to preface this with this. So not the best person for it, but it's just really consistent yep. noise. Uh, and now I haven't ever, ever focused to see if other tires have peaks or valleys, but now I'm going to do that. Every time I go to a stoplight, it's going to be neutral. <laughs> and, and, and listen. And believe me, when I leave work, I still have highway tires. Like I, cannot, <laughs> I cannot get out of my head. It's like every time if I go home to visit the family, hop in the family car, I'm like, oh, there's a lot of cabinet noise in this. Or, and my parents are like, what? What yeah. is that? <laughs> So after tread noise, the next kind of the big thing that we look at that we'll get into here is kind of our coarse, coarse noise or your broom roar is what we call it. Um, so this we usually do around uh, 50 kph and this is on that very rough chip seal aggregate. Oh sure, this is like what the roads are paved with outside. Yep. So unfortunately this is everywhere in Texas and which is good because we really get a good feel for how well our tires are doing. And it's got to be the harshest pavement anywhere in the country. Yeah. But it's very cheap to... Oh, is that why it's the case? Yeah, for those rural roads that go on for hundreds of miles. <laughs> so, as I said, we do this one at 50 kph, and we'll do this we'll do this one or two times, and then we'll go in for the, for the other set. So you just kind of listen. You got the boominess, the ear input boom in the background. You kind of hear it in the background, there's a little bit of that rattle, but it's kind of like... Yeah. So as we should see when we go to the set with the foam in it, that's really the area that it's going to focus on. Um, throughout the development process, and when we developed that technology for Tesla, on average we saw about 4 dB improvement. Okay. Just in that range. And as we all know, you know it's a logarithmic scale. Do you find that um, electric vehicle motor noise can get in the way of your evaluation of tires? So it's part of the job. It's up to us to filter through all that to make sure that in the end we're getting the right read on the tire. That's so. cool. And also spending time with the car throughout its life cycle here, you, you get to know its quirks over time, I guess. Uh, very much so. We just rotated to the other set of tires we have. Only difference between this set and the first set is that now we have our sound comfort foam technology inside the liner of the tire and we're going to do the exact same thing break the tires in do some coast downs drive on our course road and evaluate subjectively how much noise is improved sounds good can't wait all right let's go normally with regular cars yeah they slow down a lot quicker yeah. <laughs> but these are the same tires that uh achieve the 400 plus on the model s mile range correct right so you guys um and, and how difficult was it to get uh the tires to to help with that kind of range in the Tesla? So it, it, it's obviously a, a massive task with, you know, rolling resistance, you know, that's a very large challenge in itself. Um, the compromise, engineering compromises that need to be made to minimize losses in other areas such as traction, um, your noise attributes, tread life even, you know, it's massive, you know, since working with Tesla, we've had to expand our performance envelope to make sure we're not sacrificing as much in other areas while still meeting the range needs. And I kind of the easiest way to think about, you know, rolling resistance, you know, the best tire is going to be one that's going to be a low hysteresis tire. So imagine, you've probably seen videos online, someone has like a really dense rubber ball and a ball of putty. If you drop them both at the same height, the ball of putty is probably going to stick to the ground the other ball is going to bounce right back up. We want the ball to bounce back up. It maintains, it maintains the energy. It doesn't lose it to waste waste heat. Now, for a race tire, the ball of putty is perfect. Sure, That's what we want. Say, yeah, different use. Yeah, yeah, but that would also eat up range. Yeah, uh, exactly. Because yeah. yeah. rolling resistance is essentially, in simplest terms, it's uh, your hysteristic gloss times deflection. So there's two key attributes there, and for us, you know, we can attack the energy control problem with low hysteresis compounds, whether it's in tread, sidewalls, areas where you're going to see lots of deflection to cause changes in the molecules to generate heat. Or you can work with, as Cameron mentioned earlier, work with the stiffness properties of the tire, whether it be in the 
blocks of the tires, sidewalls, whatever component is going to best optimize that or minimize that, that heat generation or uh, waste heat, if you will, that's going to where you start to see the benefits of improving roller resistance, but then we'll be able to manage how the rest of that affects other tire performance categories such as noise, trigger, your wet, dry grips, snow charging for an all season. Yeah. Um, so I'm already noticing, what was that uh, noise that you talked about? What, what is it tread shear? Uh, shaw, tread shaw. Tre tread shaw. Yeah. Significantly less. Yeah. Uh, well, you can see here, it's just constantly just a little bit of airborne pattern noise, but that's it. There's no none of that cavity ringing. No, it's just a solid, room. nice undertone. I mean, from my perception, is it's it's noticeable Very quietness. Noticeable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So same speed, 50 kph. Yeah, isn't that crazy? So, so kind of that that ringing whine sound that we had last time. There's still a little bit there, but now it's more just that coarse rumble sound. I mean, it's a totally different sound profile to me. Yeah. So now again, we're, that service, worst case scenario from like a booming horse noise input perspective, but we've at least eliminated some of that cavity noise in the background. So that's just one less thing that the uh, consumer has to you know, deal it's with. It's so that. neat to be able to, to, to hear the foam back to back without the foam because uh, I, I did not expect that big of a difference. Yep, and like I said, We've seen 4 dB on average for the programs that we've implemented this technology in. So, um, you know, it's, it's a figure, it's an amount that your consumers will notice. And, you know, doing back to back, the wheels are the same, tires are the same, with the exception of the foam, same vehicle, same loading conditions. It's yeah. the same way we test. Essentially, we're trying to minimize as many variables as possible. I think we so, did a good job. So that in the end, the only real difference is the tire itself. all she wrote that's pretty amazing i mean serious um uh you know I, while i can't uh narrow down the frequency ranges like you can what i can say is we just drove on that same surface without the foam in the tire and then with the foam in the tire and it you could have told me we were on a completely different surface that's pretty neat that Light is cool you and, and you and yeah i yeah. think we're not on the same piece of road i mean certainly you can tell it's still a rough road it's not dead silent of course it's still but the, the the sound profile has totally changed and to me it's just less annoying I don't know how to quantify that into what frequency ranges are annoying but it just felt nice yeah and, and that's another thing too you know humans are you know, we're all different um, there are frequency ranges that you know some of us are more sensitive to than others like example my dad uh, and the truck that he has in a certain RPM range it makes this whistle sound through the intake I pick up on it, but he can't. Oh, interesting. So, the more work we do to kind of minimize that regular structure bar noise that can be intrusive, you know, to, to certain people or everyone, depending on how loud it is, the better experience is going to be for the customer. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, cool, cool to showcase that technology. That was a great, great test, I think. Cool. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So, thanks again. Yeah. Cool. Thank you.